Alrighty, let's get this to work. So this is the second section of uh, this piece on um, power law size distributions arising out of pretty simple mechanisms. So we talked about random walks, um, randomness, fantastic, everywhere, really good basis for uh, creating interesting things, as it turns out, which is good, because we start with the randomness thing. In terms of universe, whatever, okay. Um, let me get this up properly. Behave, behave. I had some bad behavior before. All right, so, okay, so we've talked about randomness. This is variable transformation. So this is a nice thing. It's, it's quite common. Um, uh, the simple story is that we go from a distribution that has a very plausible mechanism behind it, such as an exponential distribution. We have a connection between two variables involved in the system. So one variable is being described described by a simple distribution. The variable connection is also reasonable, makes sense. We'll have an example involving Doctor Who. And the outcome for this other variable over here is a power law size distribution. So reasonable thing, reasonable thing, crazy thing. It's good, right? So we've, uh, <coughs> we've got these two pieces. So elementary distributions, uh, such as exponentials, and then uh, some connection between them, between a couple of variables, at least two variables in the system, that is a power relationship. Right. Very good. So it's all about, so this is a simple kind of statistical uh, result we'll be using. Uh, we start with a random variable x. It's got some, uh, you have to put your, your goggles on for this. So it has some um, distribution p of x. There's a connection just in general between these two uh, two, fun uh, two variables, y and x, okay, it's very generally speaking here. Uh, and the probability of y is related to the probability of x is p of y dy, p of x dx, right? You have to have the same. So it's a kind of an elevated counting again. Uh, and this can be turned into this formula. So it's the sum of uh, wherever y uh, is, uh, is uh, such that, right, we want all the values of y such that f of x equals y. Okay, so all the so the so all the instances under which um, it's getting hard. Um, uh, so for all the values of x that transform to y, we need to look at all of those points because every time we have those values of x, they're contributing to the probability of y being what it is. Uh, the relationship between x and f we have to invert, right? So this x gets replaced by uh, the inverse function of y, and then. <coughs> Very excitingly, right? So the dx, this is the Jacobian piece on the bottom. So we'll get to it. It's a little funny looking thing there, but there's a derivative in there. And that's again x. So this is really f prime evaluated x. But we need all of this right hand side to end up in terms of y because we're trying to find the probability distribution for y. Okay? We have a probability distribution for x. We have a connection between x and y trying to find the probability distribution of y. Here's the general formula. So let's do it for this more specific example. Again, still somewhat general, but more specific example that we're talking about. So let's imagine we have a one-to-one -one relationship, so that funny little sum thing goes away, uh, and that we have, as I said before, a power law relationship between them. So it's y is equal to uh, c x to the minus alpha. Okay, so we're going to look at y large and x small. We'll see why uh, that's that's the needed in a little bit. And we, ha we need to... So x, the inverse of x, the inverse of this function is very easy, right? We divide by c, we get y over c, take uh, 1 over alpha, the power of 1 over alpha on each side with a minus sign, and then we'll clean everything off and we'll get x is y over c to the minus 1 over alpha. We'll use that again in a second. We could have used it here, but okay, all right. Different ways to do it. We could have started with x as a function of y and found dx. In that way, we'll do it, we'll do it in this way. So dy is... Uh, equal to d of whatever y is in terms of x. So it's here it's c, x minus alpha. We just differentiate this. We're all over this. We're so excited. We did too much calculus. Uh, actually can be handy sometimes. So minus alpha pops down here. x minus alpha minus 1. Uh, and we get our dx sitting out, a little differential, right? And there's a constant c floating around. So we can invert this. So we're going to put everything over on the other side. Uh, to get our dx, so dx is the guy we're after, so there'll be an x to the alpha plus 1, that's this piece. Uh, the c and alpha, multiply those guys together, put them on the bottom, and we get a minus sign here. 
All right, fine, fine. And we had an x, but we want to replace that with y. So as I said before, that's really y over c to the power of minus 1 over alpha. So there's the minus sign. Here's the 1 over alpha. And it was to the power of alpha plus 1. Yes. Good. OK. And a little more trimming of things. Um, so this y, it's really y to the minus 1, right? That's alpha over alpha, minus 1 over alpha. So we can kind of, that's, it's useful to put in that format be because we know that y to the minus 1 is, is a bad place to be, right? It's not normalizable at, at that point. So there's a minus 1 and then a minus 1 over alpha. So we can see this, this term takes us to a more negative exponent. So c to the 1 alpha just ends up on top, right? There's a c to the minus 1, so that's going to cancel this c. And the minus 1 over alpha, put it up on top, we get c to the 1 over alpha. The minus sign is still there, the alpha is still there. This is just some stuff out the front. But, but we're just checking that it's all good and not evil. Mm. OK, so now we're going to make our transformation. p of y dy equals p of x dx. So we throw our x in here. Again, it's this form, so y over c to the minus 1 over alpha. We put our dx, the blob we just found, and here's the y part of it we're excited about. Now, a couple of things could happen. So this is a great big blob, but basically it depends on this function. And you can see there's already a power law size distribution stuff uh, situation occurring over here. Thrilled, totally excited. We love these things. All right. <coughs> now, if this p of x approaches a non-zero constant, so an exponential, for example, or a uh, Gaussian, right, so these nice normal kind of things, so to speak, normal, um, very reasonable kinds of distributions that, that arise from very simple uh, mechanisms. So if that's true, then as y becomes large, so we're thinking about y becoming large, x becoming, um, x becoming small, then <coughs> this just uh, this piece dominates. This or well, this becomes the story, right? So y to the minus one, minus one over alpha. Okay. Now, if we have some other form, if if x has some, uh, if the probability distribution for x has some kind of structure around x that's not so simple, that's x to the beta, 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 egg beta. The Greeks liked egg betas. It's a beta. X to the beta. That's that's how we know it's beta. X to the beta. Uh, then. Uh, yeah, really funny. So x to the beta, then this piece in here, there's going to be y to the minus beta over alpha. And that's what happens. y to the minus beta over alpha. You get an extra piece here. So a couple of possibilities there. Uh, and we'll go through some examples. All right, so the exponential distribution, as I said, approaches a constant. Uh, nothing, it doesn't certainly doesn't behave polynomially. Uh, and um, again, we have that same transformation. Then we simply, we know straight away, actually, that it's going to be minus 1, minus 1 over alpha. There's some correction terms we could put in there, but basically it's going to be proportional to this. Super duper. All right. Um, so exponentials come from randomness. You can think about this. So if you have a um, mechanism uh, where, say, you have your relationship with your um, beloved, or say, more quotidian example, light bulb, right, that will still be working tomorrow with probably p and will fail with probably 1 minus p. So what's the chance that it lasts for n days? Well, it's just p to the n, right? p times p times p has to work every, you have to wake up and check that you're still in the relationship or your light bulb still works. With probably p that happens, you're flipping some coin that has comes up yes with p. And one, no with 1 minus p. So what's the chance that it fails on uh, fails after exactly n plus 1 days? Well, it has to have p successes, so p to the n, and then 1 minus p on the n. But it's really that p to the n part. And if you play around with that, you can see it's e to the minus log n of 1 over p. Uh, so it's an exponential decay. Think about that one. That's a good one to uh, work on at home for all you fans. OK, <coughs> fans of the exponential. Happens, it comes about very easily. Now, this, uh, these, uh, this kind of behavior we'll see again later on when we talk about robustness. Um, robust yet fragile systems, the highly optimized tolerance business. OK, very exciting. So here's another fun example. Um, let's say you are randomly transporting yourself to any point in the universe, um, <coughs> let's, and which we could think of as selecting a random point. But uh, let's say you're not doing such a good job in your uh, TARDIS or whatever device you're using is failing pretty badly. Uh, you 
measure the force of uh, gravity locally, um, usually somewhat indirectly. So for instance, in the middle of the star, you measure it by um, uh, not continuing to exist very rapidly. Uh, so it's a good thing to you know, have a sense of. Now, what we'll find out is that that um, distribution is actually a parallel size distribution there, and it decays as f to the minus 5 halves, which is in between, right? So it's one of these ones that has a infinite, in principle, infinite variance, finite mean. So most of the time, lots of little guys, right? The normal thing is small, and then boom, occasionally bigger and bigger, and then occasionally you're inside a star. That's not good. So let's, uh, here's, a, here's a nice, here's just a couple of pages where we explain how this works. Uh, so let's, um, so F is uneven, right? The distribution of, of gravity is uneven, uh, as I hope you never really quite find out. Um, and let's say, okay, so the probably that you, uh, you land near a star. So imagine you, you're, you're well it's near the stars where the interesting things happen. So you land near a star. It's probably that you are in a shell a, of, of radius R, um, is going to be proportional to R squared, right? Because that's the uh, times dr, because that is the surface area. So it's 4 pi R squared for the surface area of a, of a sphere. And the little dr gives you the thickness. So that gives you the volume of points, um, volume of space from which you're choosing from, for that, for that um, distance from the star. OK, so it's proportional to R squared. So there's our, um, there's, there's our probability distribution we'll start with. We want to find the probability distribution for f. So we need a connection between them. You know, it's OK. So maybe, maybe just distributed randomly in space. But it's really that what, ha what matters is, is what's near, near the stars. OK, so, so we're going to think about being near a star, as I said. So the law of gravity. So we know that because of apples and some crazy Englishmen. Um, we understand this. This is actually not a trivial thing. Um, or it wasn't obvious at all. It took us quite a while as humans to figure it out. And even even when Newton apparently was playing around with the form of this, he sort of proposed all sorts of little powers and so on. It, it seems very plausible now if you look at it. Um, lots of things are obvious after the fact, uh, as I've said for many, many years. So um, uh, it's the, uh, if you imagine the, you know, the gravitational field coming out, it's being uh, attenuated and this is a, this is kind of a flux story, right? So as you grow out again, it's that shell. It's, it's being weakened and weakened, and that's what you get a 1 over r squared. Well, so for zip stories in two dimensions, because it's three-dimensional, it's a, it's a 1 over r. Um, OK, so we invert that. We just get r is proportional to f to the minus a half. And then we also, so that's our connection. So it's exactly what we were talking about. It's an inverse parallel relationship between two variables. And from that, we need. Uh, we also need to get our connection between the differential. So df, we'll take the derivative of this guy, differentiate this right-hand side, so d of r minus 2, it's all proportional. We get an r to the minus 3 dr, uh, which then we can, then we have, it. we'll invert this guy, so dr, we're going to put this r to the minus 3 on the other side, so it's dr is r cubed df. We know r is f to the minus a half, or proportional to it, so we get f to the minus 3 halves df. All right, so we have these pieces, and so they're connected here, or collected here. So r is proportional to f to the minus half. That's the parallel relationship between the two variables. Here's the connection that arising from that between the um, differentials, and here's the uh, the original distribution that has a plausible story. Uh, so we want to determine the probability distribution for f. It's connect the, the connected through this standard uh, relationship and probability. Um, so our r gets replaced, and this is not right. There should be a constant in there. F to the minus a half. It doesn't really matter. But this f to the minus a half, uh, dr. That's going to be f to the minus three halves df. That's this blob up here. So we're putting it all in. Uh, this probably is r squared. So we, this thing gets replaced by blob squared. So blob blob. So it's a squared. It's proportional to it. So there's going to be f to the minus one, f to the minus three halves. Boom boom. And those things add up because we're terrific at adding fractions. F to the minus 5 halves. Okay? Sorry. So that's our story. Uh, so gamma, our exponent, is, minus, is, is 5 halves. So that means the mean, as I said, is finite. The variance is infinite. It's a wild distribution. And um, so be careful. If your TARDIS is not working, it's probably best to get it repaired. Yeah. Um, <coughs> don't try to wing it on the way home. So just a little coda here. 
is pleplo. Um, so we've explained a couple of things here with, with pretty good, you know, healthy mechanisms. Pallor in, pallor out, that's a bad story, right? It's only, it's okay to do it, but it's only a very, uh, that's a little part of the story. We want to get mechanisms that explain, get the mechanisms that explain these power laws from nice, sensible uh, behavior at the start, right? Just, this is just, this is goodness. So that's uh, explaining a power law is resulting from another power law. It just, that's not right. It's a, feels like a homunculus argument. You can click on that and explore that. We've talked about this a little bit, right? So brain being described by, um, or represented as another person inside you, which presumably goes all the way down. Turtles sitting on top of turtles. So that's bad. So we're not going to do that. You're not going to do that, right? I told you not to do it. If you do it, it wasn't my fault. Um, we need mechanisms. That's, what, that's, that's the glorious pursuit uh, that we make. We want mechanisms. All right, so that's the end of this little piece. Uh, we will get on to um, fantastic, wonderful uh, ways of producing power laws um, in ways of becoming, right? How systems really uh, become. And that will give us stories about networks, about cities, about books. It's not perfect, but it will give us also a really good uh, grounding, right? So these are the so-called rich gets richer models. Uh, we'll have some arguments, and we'll see who wins. All right.